Hola, cage fighting connoisseurs. This is KidNativeBloodyElbow.com here for the UFC 161 bathrobe review. Once again, the bathrobe is in the mothballs because it's too hot in the summer to wear a bathrobe, but I am fresh out of bed. Rest assured, I was up late last night. I had to miss the event live. I went to a wedding. had to catch up with it uh, after the fact. And knowing that many of the fights are going to be decisions going into it, although I didn't know who was going to win, it made it even more painful and long, although I could fast forward through the commercials on the FX broadcast. Anyway... Overall, I'd give this two and a half stars. It wasn't the worst UFC ever. That would have to go to like UFC one, UFC 33 or UFC 149. Those would be two contenders. UFC 24, infamous disaster uh, of the Zeffa era. This uh, there have been many worse cards than this. I'd say UFC uh, 61 was worse. I believe that's one with Arlovsky Sylvia three. Um, anyway, let's run through the run through the card. I enjoyed it more than, than some. I enjoyed it more than I was expecting to, especially after I heard there were many stinkers. Uh, the Facebook, Facebook fights, um, Bantamweights, Eve Shaboon and Dustin Pegg, I'd give this one three stars. I would give it four stars, except the decision was so effing bad. Dustin Pegg totally won this fight. Like, how can you not give a guy any credit for like nearly having submitted his opponent 11 times? I mean, and, and I don't know what Yves Jaboon did. He, he got on top a couple times. He defended submissions well, obviously, uh, and he, he did land some ground and pound, but, but Peg was all over it. Peg got the takedowns. Peg was dominated on the ground. Peg was the aggressor. Just Canadian judging is the only thing I can think of. Just, just terrible uh, decision marred the fight. Lightweights Mitch Clark and John McGuire. Again, I thought this was a gimme decision for the hometown kid. I thought Clark was aggressive, but to no real point. I thought McGuire was getting the takedowns and dominating position. He didn't do a lot with it. Nevertheless, I scored him the win. So uh, I have to give this one, um, man, I'd have to give this one a star and a half because because uh, it wasn't a very good fight, even if the right guy had won. It was a three-star fight, tops, if uh, the right guy had won and, and the right guy didn't win. So I got a dock at a star and a half. Bantam White's role in Delorme, Edwin Figueroa, another one that I thought was a bullshit decision. This one was closer. I, I think some I could see where you could see where Delorme won, but still I thought Figueroa did enough to win, was was more aggressive. Not the most fun fight. I have to give this one two stars. I would give it three, three and a half. Um not for the refing. Sean Pearson and Kenny Robertson. I give this one three stars. It was good back and forth. Kenny Robertson totally lost the thread. Uh had 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 Pearson hurt and, and just let it go. Not a bad fight, entertaining enough. But that brings us to the James Krause Sam Stout fight. Now, this one I give four fucking stars. This was a great fight, great performance by James Krause, breakout performance by UFC debutante. Uh, this kid, um, He's been around, Bellator veteran. Uh, he's, he's got a long, he's been a long time in the wilderness, had a long win streak uh, before he got to the UFC. Um, won like six, seven fights in a row for Resurrection Fighting Alliance and Titan Fighting Championships uh, and Shark Fights before uh, before he um, got a chance to come to the UFC. Had to get a revenge win against Toby Amata, the man who beat him in Bellator. And I was just impressed as shit with this kid. Uh, his striking style, a lot of unconventional strikes, front kicks, um, through a cartwheel kick that landed. Amazing. I've been waiting for years for that. We've seen guys dig around with it and try it. We've seen guys land it in, in other MMA, but we've never seen it land in the UFC to my recollection. Finally, somebody lands a cartwheel kick and, and effectively. Plus, just some classic Muay Thai kicks. Uh, that, that that right kick to the head that, that cut Stout's head open it was just a classic shin bone on, on a cheekbone contact. Brutal stuff. Plus, uh, Topped it all off with the submission at the end, and, and and Stout's own strategy of going for the takedowns to try to steal the decision played against him, brilliantly played by James Cross. I'm so glad he got that submission because I think Stout would have won the decision based on the judging earlier in the fights, earlier in the card, and it's just fun to see a kid uh, break through. Stout's somebody who's been very frustrating. He's he's had some entertaining fights. His his uh, trilogy with Sam uh, Spencer Fisher, two of those three fights were great. Uh, Knocked out Eve Edwards brutally, but frankly, this is a guy who's tended to get a lot of decisions, whose striking style isn't that exciting, um, who's been in the UFC forever. I mean, since 2006, 
Never a fan favorite, never a contender, just always wins just enough fights to stay in the UFC. I mean, mad respect. That's a serious accomplishment. Sam Stout's a serious dude. A very, He's got an MMA legacy he can be proud of, but it's nice to see some new blood. I'm looking forward to see what James Krause can do in the lightweight division. Kid is tall and rangy and aggressive and just has a slick bag of tricks that I think that uh, other fighters in the UFC lightweight division are going to have a hard time dealing with. Look forward to seeing more of him. Have to give that fight four stars. Um, up next, Jake Shields and Tyron Woodley. Everybody hated on this fight. And I was expecting not to like it because I, I saw the tweets. I saw how bad people was. I saw the press conference with Dana White before I watched the fights. I saw, I saw him just hating on this fight. And while I hate on Tyron Woodley's performance, I think Woodley gave the fight away. I don't know why he was so passive. I don't know how he got himself sucked into the, Jam the Jake Shields fight. I didn't mind watching it, though. I enjoyed it. It was a clinch battle up against the fence. It was Jake Shields' fight. Uh, he, was, he was aggressive and active. I didn't mind watching it. I mean, I don't know why. Some, sometimes a clinch battle against the fence bothers me. This one, there was movement. Uh, there was constant interaction. There was aggression. There was strategy. There were tactics. I dug it, you know, and occasionally Woodley would show these flashes. That spinning back fist was awesome, and then he just eased off the gas. He pace shields with a spinning back fist and then just does nothing. Like, what the fuck? What, dude? Where are you? Where's your head? I think it's good for Woodley that he lost his fight. I think he got a little arrogant after he marked Jay Huron in his UFC debut. And we've seen this from Woodley before. He's had these great performances. He destroyed Andre Galvao, ended his MMA career, and uh, and then you know had had some uh, bad performances to follow that. Lost to Nate Marquardt badly. Um, you know, I, I think uh, did a so-so performance against Paul Daly and Tarek Safadine, where he just coasted on his wrestling. Um, you know, so he's he's an up-and-down fighter. I think he's a bit of a head case. At least he's not with the Black Zillions. I think ATT is good camp, good camp for Woodley. Um, I just the kid needs to get his head together. He's got all the talent in the world. Uh, I just cannot believe he gave that fight away because it was his fight to win. He clearly had the advantage over Shields on the feet. Could beat him up all day long if he had been aggressive, and and he had the wrestling to stymie Shields' attack if he just would have broken from the clinch. Every time I every time you know watching that fight, it's like every time they turn around, Woodley's pushing into Shields. Like sure, Shields had the body lock over under body lock a lot of the time, but a lot of time he didn't. And also, why not break that lock and get out? Get separation and start punching on the guy. Just a frustrating performance. But I give it three stars. I didn't think it was that bad. Everybody hated on it, but it was a fine fight with me. I, I mean, I wouldn't pay for a whole. I wouldn't want to pay for a whole card like that. But you know, a fight like that every once in a while, I like it. The thing with Shields, man, UFC hates him, but he keeps winning. So you know, we'll see where to put him. It's, it's too bad that John Fitch uh, got cut from the UFC, and it's too bad that John Fitch seems to be done. Uh, that loss to Josh Berkman at World Series of Fighting on Friday night. Brutal 41-second loss. I think Fitch's chin has been permanently rattled. I think the Hendricks uh, knockout rattled his chin. It's a proven scientific fact. You can you can lose your chin from a brutal knockout. And, and like Vondelay Silva and so many fighters, John Fitch seems to be in that category. Chuck Liddell, another guy whose chin went away. Um, it's too bad because I would love to have seen Shields versus Fitch. That's a fight I've wanted to see. For a decade now, you got you got Shields with the Caesar Gracie camp in Northern California. You got Fitch with the AKA in Northern California. You got wrestling, wrestling, jujitsu, jujitsu. I mean, uh, this is a rivalry that that still war never going to happen. It's really a bummer to me that, that those guys never got to meet. I'd still like to see Shields fight Koscheck. I think Koscheck could kill him, and that'd be satisfying to see because Shields uh, Shields is a Klingon man. That style is entirely annoying. I love to see him work at submission magic, but as we can see, wrestlers can neutralize him, but he can he can beat the wrestlers even if he can't get his takedown. Uh, craziness. Anyway, let's get to the main card. And first off, I'm just glad that uh, Vox Media pays for these because I don't have to pay for it. So for you who paid $55 for this, I mean, caveat emptor, dude, buyer beware, because it was clear this was not a, a $55 card. I mean... Once, once the main event was canceled, and once Shogun versus Little Nog was canceled, uh, this card was weak, weak, weak. So if you paid for it, uh, you know, bully for you. You're a true fan of the UFC. What I mean, not not making the most sensible use of your money, though. I got to say. But let's get to the fights. Sean Jordan versus Pat Barry. Uh, I give this one four stars. Uh, no momentum swings, or I would have given it five stars. But beautiful a performance by Sean Jordan. Uh, the kid's really developing. He's very athletic, obviously, former uh, LSU uh, linebacker, I want to say. 
big, mean, tough kid, and he just mauled Pat Barry. And Pat Barry's had it coming for a while. Love Pat Barry off, off you know, as, as Eugene and I were talking about on the show this week, Pat Barry's great outside the cage. One of the most likable guys in MMA. Everything he does is just gold. A great guy. However, inside the cage, he annoys the bejesus out of me. This is the guy, the king of the high fives, the king of letting people off the hook. Uh, he, he's got just vicious striking ability, no grappling ability whatsoever, and sometimes he just takes his head out of the game. I don't know what he, he should have been, on paper, the far better striker than Sean Jordan. And Sean Jordan just tooled him with a pretty limited two-punch uh, combination, straight left uppercut, and Pat Berry had no answer. Sean Jordan just poured it on. Pat Berry turtled up. It was all over. Uh, I like to see Sean Jordan emerging, though. This kid, uh, I don't know that he's going to be a... In, in heavyweight, he might be a contender. You never know. That's such a thin division. But I like to see somebody coming out, getting some big wins, getting some excitement going in that division. would love to see him... Um, uh, against Todd Duffy. I think that would be a heck of a fight. I think that uh, that would um, that the winner of that could go on to bigger and better things. He's got a loss to Czech Congo, but otherwise pretty unmarred. Uh, and he, he lost early on in his strike force career to Devin Cole, who's in the where are they now category. And I just uh, I, I think big things uh, come from Sean Jordan. Look forward to seeing what he does next. Pat Berry, I mean might be time to look into coaching. I think I think Pat's done what he's got to do in the UFC. Maybe go to Bellator, World Series of Fighting, something like that. I don't know. Anyway, winners, Bantamweight fight, Alexis Davis, Rosie Sexton. Not a terrible fight. I'd give it three stars, back and forth. I might be docking it because I'm a big Rosie Sexton fan. I think she's one of the smartest people in MMA, and so it was, it was, it was painful for me to just see her get dominated. Um, all three judges had her winning around. I could probably see that, um, but this was this was clearly the worst fight in in worst women's MMA fight in UFC history, which isn't saying that much. There haven't been that many, and so far they've all been great, except this one, which was just okay. Nothing wrong with that, just okay. I think Alexis Davis, uh, no threat to Ronda Rousey. Rosie Sexton obviously has a lot of work to do. She might have topped out. She might be a, a generation of, of women's MMA that that peaked before the UFC. Uh, uh, Absorbed uh, the division into the into the octagon. So, you know, too bad for Rosie. Uh, keep plugging away, though. We're still rooting for you. Alexis Davis, uh, good fight, good performance. Uh, nothing to write home about. The next fight, however, Ryan Jimmo versus Igor Pokorak. This is the Ryan Jimmo Canadian fans hated. At least it wasn't a five round fight. Jimmo has been entertaining his UFC run so far, even with some flash KOs. But against Pokorak, Pokorak, however you say the dude's name, just a terrible fight, terrible matchup. Just, uh, just poker has nothing, no special skills. Jimmo just coasted with the clinch. Uh, terrible fight, two stars. I don't know why I liked it. I, I liked the Shields fight, and I didn't like this one. I just maybe I care more about Jake Shields because he's a more storied fighter. He's been fighting at a higher level of competition, and Woodley is this diamond of the rough who's got all the physical tools. Whereas Pokorak, uh, Igor, dude. Just go away. You're not you're never going to entertain me. Neither of these guys are. Uh, Ryan Jimmo does a robot, but that's about it. So just a terrible fight. Waste of time. Waste of money. Heavyweight. Then that brings us to Stipe Miocic versus Roy Nelson. What can you say about this fight? I'm a big country fan, have been for a long time, but Stipe totally tooled him. It was it was very reminiscent of the Frank Mir or Junior Dos Santos fights where uh, you know Roy Nelson uh, against guys that he can steer into his right hand, he's great. Against guys he can't, he's terrible. And Stipe clearly had done his homework. He was circling away from the power hand. He wasn't falling for the left hook, uh, and he was just nailing Nelson with straights. Uh, boom, boom, and combination. Boom, boom, boom. Nelson is tough as hell. I mean, he set a new record for strikes absorbed without getting knocked out. Pretty dubious honor. It's also a bummer that this is the end of Nelson's contract. He's had such a terrible relationship with the UFC. He he was an Ultimate Fighter winner, one season ten. Uh, got locked into this terrible terrible contract. I don't know why they insist on screwing the Ultimate Fighter winners because they, they lock them into these terrible, low-paid contracts. It's one of the worst ways to get in the UFC. Roy Nelson's had a storied, successful UFC career. He's made the promotion a lot of money and he has made peanuts. He's possibly the most underpaid fighter in UFC history. I'd like to see some guys do some research on that. That's my claim without doing any, any actual number crunching. The guy got hosed in his UFC deal. here, And then he's always been back and forth with Dana and they've never liked him. They didn't want to sign 
Steinbrenner in the first place because of his look, which I think is stupid. Very marketable guy. America's the most obese uh, country in the history of the world. Let us have a fat fighter. I know, I know I've got friends that are a little heavy that love Roy Nelson. I identify with Roy Nelson. He's a redneck. He's got the mullet. Uh, he's, he's got bad taste and he doesn't care what people think. People love that. That is America. And um, He's just getting hosed by the UFC. I predict he's not going to get re-signed after this performance. He's off to Bellator, World Series of Fighting. It's a bummer. Uh, the dude deserves a lavish UFC pay package. Um, they've made so much money off him. He sold a lot of tickets. He sold a lot of pay-per-views. He's brought in a lot of TV ratings. He's put in some great performances. He's knocked out a lot of guys. He's clearly at this mid-tier. Uh, I, we thought going in he was better than Stipe Miocic. I think Roy thought so too. I think I think he underrated, uh, maybe looked past Stipe, didn't train hard enough or something. Hard to say. Um, nevertheless, a disappointing fight for Nelson. Great performance from Miocic. Really happy to see that. Um, uh, kids trying to break into the into the into the office here. Um, but I give it I give it three and a half stars, maybe four stars for Mio Chicks. There wasn't any momentum swings. Nelson really never threatened. So hard to give it five, even hard to give it four. Uh, I give it four stars just because of the extent of the fight uh, and, and Mio Chicks pretty much flawless performance. He couldn't get the finish, but Nelson's obviously a tough cat. Junior Dos Santos couldn't finish him either. Um, just a, a brutally tough cat. Uh, you know, a look. Best of wishes to to Roy. Maybe maybe Miocic versus Sean Jordan next. I've never really bought Miocic as a contender, especially after losing to Stefan Struve, who I'm not high on at all. Uh, maybe Miocic versus Sean Jordan would be a fun fight. Miocic versus Todd Duffy. Uh, you know, something like that. Anyway, brings us to the headliner: Rashad Evans versus Dan Henderson. I had high hopes for this fight. A fan of both guys. Um, two star fight. Just just. The fact that it was a three-rounder and not a five-rounder, you knew it was going to be frustrating. And uh, the guys' styles weren't perfect matches for each other. Rashad's movement made it hard for Henderson to connect. Henderson's chin made it hard for Rashad to do much, although I was impressed that Rashad seemed to hurt Henderson more than we've seen Henderson hurt by anybody, even Shogun, who caught Henderson with some of the most killer shots ever. Uh, it seemed uh, Henderson might be losing a step. It might be time for Dan to think about retirement because, frankly, losing this fight, he should be out of title contention forever, and if he's not in the title hunt, what is the point? This is a guy who beat Fedor. This is a guy who won, who held two pride titles. This is a guy who's a strike force champion. Um, you know, if he's not going to win that UFC belt, what is the point of continuing? I mean, you know, he's had a great UFC career, one of the best ever to not ever hold a belt in the UFC. Uh, he's won plenty of other belts. He had the pride titles when that was bigger than the UFC titles. Um, you know, not much to say. Just frustrating. He's a limited fighter. He's got the big right hand, uh, and that's about it. And and Rashad exposed his limitations. Rashad, Rashad exposed how slow-footed he was. Rashad, uh, also a frustrating fighter. Like, when he was pouring it on with the combinations, he was hurting Henderson, but then he, he was prone to coasting and dancing around. And, uh, you know, I think walking into that jab in the first round that got dropped really spooked him. And who can blame him? You know, so that that cut back the aggression. It wasn't until this corner lit a fire under his going in the third round that he really poured it on. I think Hendo uh, thought he had the first two rounds in the bag, which he didn't. Uh, tend to be overconfident. Thought he won the Machida fight too, which he clearly didn't. So, just a disappointing fight. Just frustrating. You want to see both guys do better. You want to see a finish. You want to see somebody. I wanted to see Henderson win so he could get the title shot. Rashad's already lost badly to John Jones. I think Rashad's future ought to be at middleweight. Um, just a frustrating night overall. You can't blame the UFC. Uh, they tried to bring a title fight to Winnipeg. They tried to bring uh, Little Nog versus Shogun. They tried to bring a, stack, a you know a reasonably stacked card. With lots of Canadian fighters on it. What can you do? You know you get the bad breaks. Canadian fans. Uh, this uh, UFC 149 out in the heartland of Canada. Canada got screwed too. This card was slightly better in the end than 149, which was just a terrible card. Um, you know, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? I, 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 overall, I'd give it two and a half stars, I think, as, as an event. And that's that's my bathroom review. Uh, not a lot of cosmic insights or anything to, to draw out of this. I think I think the, 
the positive of this is let's look at the silver lining. We had James Krause emerge with a great breakout performance. We had Sean Jordan with a breakout performance. Uh, Stipe Miocic with a bre breakout performance. That's three, you know, like Eugene always says, you know, we go through the care, don't care. Uh, and, and going into a fight, you can't always tell who you're going to care about. Now we care about three guys very much that we didn't care about going into this card. So I think I think that's exciting. That's worthwhile. Otherwise, kind of a hot mess. Um, not the best card in the world. But anyway, we'll be back. We're, uh, UFC 162 is in two weeks, so we're going to be hyping that up. Uh, biggest card of the year, Anderson Silva defending his title against Chris Weidman. Looks like they're not going to have a super fight. Looks like John Jones turned it down. Looks like GSP turned it down. So not much to get excited about after this, but still Anderson Silva against Chris Weidman. Weidman's probably the toughest challenge to his title in a long time, maybe since Shale Sonnen uh, the first time. So... You know, going to be a big, big fight, big card, big weekend on July 4th. So, looking forward to that, and and we'll have all the coverage on Bloody Elbow, and and see you soon. I'm still thinking, trying to think of a tagline to close these out. Don't have one yet. So, adios, cage fighting connoisseurs. We'll we'll keep working on it. Thanks a lot.